Hey YouTube. Well, uh, I'm in the uh, hills of southwestern North Carolina and uh, I think I need to slow down on my, my rush to the north because it's, it's a little chilly here. Uh, um, anyway, I'm at the home of Carl Sandburg. He's a, an American poet and he uh, one of his major works was a biography of Lincoln. So we're gonna visit his home and uh, learn a little bit more about him. Right? So let's head in. In uh, 1945, when he was 67 years old and, and he was uh, world famous, uh, Carl Sandburg settled here uh, in Flat Rock, North Carolina and um, he had his, uh, his wife, his daughters, grandchildren, uh, and here he, um, I love this quote from him, give me a quiet garret alone where I might sit for a few casual callers and tell them carelessly offhandedly, this is where I dirty paper. Thus each poet prays and dreams, the eternal hobo asks for a quiet room with a little paper he can dirty with birds who sit where he tells them. One thing my bus and I both have in common is we are low gear and slow going up hills and down hills we tend to get a little bit of a runaway. So the uh, Sandbergs moved here in uh, 1945 and uh, it's, just, it's deceptive but this house is 9,000 square feet. Uh, 3,000 on each level. Um, it doesn't look that big, but uh, when we go inside, you'll see. Um, the Mrs. Sandberg, well, they moved here from Michigan. Uh, they lived on the shores of, of Lake Michigan, and uh, Mrs. Sandberg was uh, raised uh, prize winning goats. And she wanted to move south, a little bit more hospitable climate. Um, and uh, he was happy to keep her happy. So uh, when they found this place they moved here and now uh, we'll go take a look inside. He did that upstairs and uh, excuse me anywhere getting my uh, a poet one advantage of a poet in writing just bring that notebook with you notepad and a pencil dirty paper as he called it and he did and uh, not only they have all these books I subscribe to near 50 magazines and when he was being interviewed about his work, he would always mention the success his wife was having with the goats. So got a little thing here. Two goats, they certainly need two goats if they're going to have a family milk supply. Those goats turned out to be way out of the ordinary goats. That's how we got into having goats. <laughs> That's Helga, the youngest daughter. And the children, you see, even the young lady over there is the grandchildren. And that's her brother, Edward Steichen, with the whiskers. It's probably from the, the furnace. It might be on. Got chili. That's all I can think of. I haven't noticed that before. <laughs> this is the dining room. And uh, Carl was gone half the time. But when Sandbergs did have a, a cook. So the owners before the Sandbergs moved the kitchen inside from where the garage is now. This is where he would come at night, close the doors over here into his bedroom. He had a door going to his bedroom. Nice, right. nice man cave. And uh, very simple. Again, separate bedrooms. Second, separate bedrooms because they had different work schedules and he was gone half the time. So Mrs. Sandberg, when the, the goats were born, uh, they would bring them in the house and bottle feed them to make sure uh, that they got the nourishment. They'd sleep in here with some boxes like this with straw and put them in back in the, uh, the room, back in the furnace room. And uh, that was her side of the, of the family. I like the little uh, 
circular pond uh, and they they moved here with their uh, three grown daughters um, and uh, grandchildren from the the youngest daughter uh, she lived here until she remarried and then they moved away uh, the other two daughters never married and uh, stayed here Margaret uh, helped a lot with uh, her father being like a secretary <laughs> Of course, this was a, a working farm, so they had chickens. Uh, this is a, a chicken house, and uh, uh, they raised pigs and goats and cattle uh, along with the goats. And uh, when they moved here, they brought uh, 50 goats, and uh, she increased that herd to 200 goats. And some of the goats were going to go see um, are actually descendants of that prize-winning herd. Now, people who know me personally from way back uh, know that when um, Eileen and I moved into our farmhouse, we brought about 1,200 books. Uh, most of my friends, this was 1978, so pre-internet, um, most of my friends uh, are still are amazed at just how many books we had. And of course, over the, what, 20, 30 years we lived in that house, or almost 30, uh, the, um, those books never left and we just added more and more. So we probably had about 3,000, maybe more. Uh, after that, um, when the Sandbergs moved here, they brought 15,000 books. So the, all those books and those bookcases, uh, he built the, had the bookcases built. Uh, so they moved here right after uh, World War II. And so he bought up a bunch of lumber, brought the lumber with him, built all those bookcases. Um, and uh, so the books we saw in there are actually his original books. So this was uh, Carl's 1962 Willys Jeep, and uh, it was the only vehicle the farm uh, that was in his name. Uh, he got this as a uh, gift for helping write the, uh, the script for the greatest story ever told. And uh, man, I wish I had that. That'd be great for having a toad. So this is the goat barn, and. Uh, Quite the setup. Like I said, she at one point uh, got up to like 200 goats. So, and uh, different pens. Feed troughs and whatnot. And there's a milking mission. Go to climb up. Put its head through here. They could shut this on the neck. Their head's bigger than their neck. Can't get out. Put a bucket of feed there to keep them busy. Of course, if you do go that big, you get a, a modern milking parlor. Same thing. Is the uh, goat stick its head through? Uh, then they can move a little bit to keep it from uh, pulling back out and have the the milking machines looks real familiar. My old dairy farm uh, had a mess of those steel or stainless pots from way back uh, when it was a small, small dairy farm. So these guys would really like you'd really like me to open up the gate, wouldn't you? To come in, and I'm not going to do it. see a few different kinds of breeds of, of goats. You can tell by the ears and the coloring and whatnot. There's, supposedly there's three babies up here and they're expecting uh, four more or the other way around. A 
Lombard cat is checking out the chickens, trying to decide. Oh wait, worse than chickens. There's a squirrel. Cat's trying to figure out if he can get over that fence and get to that squirrel before the squirrel gets to that tree. So here's the other side of the the milking parlor, but you come through the door and bring the milk across this covered walkway. And here we're taking it up and pour it through that, which would bring it over here and into the cream separator, which is up there. Bring it down and cool it. And then they would be able to package it up and cap it right here. All a nice quick uh, process. And of course back here is the milk cooler. So if they were going to bottle it right up, they had these big cans and this big old refrigerator and cool it down. Ah, and here's the cream separator. They'd pour the milk in and you could drain the, the uh, milk off and leave the cream at the top. Now, with goat's milk, it's naturally homogenized, so they really, if you wanted cream, you really needed that kind of cream separator to get it. Now, why goat's milk? Well, a couple of reasons. But one of the big ones is that uh, goat's milk is uh, made up much closer to human milk than cow milk. Sure, cows give lots and lots of milk, but it's much easier uh, for us humans to digest uh, goat's milk. And, you know, you're going to hear... If you talk to people, you hear stories about, uh, oh, goat's milk has a, a weird flavor to it. And uh, that's simply not true. It's basically the flavor of the milk reflects what they eat. So if you feed goats a healthy, nice, healthy diet, then uh, it's really tasty. I had a friend who had goats. Um, he would sit down, ice cold glass of cow's milk, ice cold glass of goat's milk, and ask us to tell the difference. I never could. Uh, but the fact that goat's milk was much easier to digest was the main reason to uh, to have them. So Carl had a, a working routine that was quite similar to mine most of my life, is that uh, he would work all night. Uh, he had a room upstairs that was uh, uh, his, his man cave that we just saw uh, and a bedroom right next to it. And he would stay up all night and work. Uh, sometimes he'd look out his bedroom window and the grandkids remember him waving as they, they went to the barn to do their work for the day. Um, they would, he would come down in the evening. Uh, they would always have uh, dinner together. Sometimes he'd read uh, what he'd been working on, uh, which the grandkids may or may not have, uh, have liked. Um, if it was a little bit uh, serious, of course, grandkids weren't real happy about it, but uh, they do remember him as being uh, quite whimsical and humorous. Uh, they would sit around, play the piano, sing. Uh, he didn't like the TV. He'd watch uh, Edward R. Murrow, and uh, that was about it. Um, the, uh, he thought it was a big time waster. And he, he figured that um, the only coin that we have uh, is the amount of time we have in our life. And if you don't spend it wisely, other people will use it up on you. So, uh, words to live by. Um, that's what I'm trying to do now. And uh, in any case, uh, he died in um, 1967. And uh, they had a little memorial here. They had a big memorial in 68 uh, in Washington, D.C. at the Lincoln uh, Memorial. Uh, Lyndon Johnson was there, he was president at the time, 
Uh, Lillian uh, Sandberg met uh, War uh, Warren Udall, uh, who was the Secretary of the Interior, I believe, um, and suggested that this place become a uh, National Historic Site, and she sold it. They liked. He came to visit, did, spent a few days, liked the idea. Um, they purchased this, the farm, the whole place, and uh, it is the first uh, National Historic Site uh, dedicated to a, a poet. I guess there's two, and uh, what did they tell me? The other one was, um, I can't remember, um, Longfellow, I think. Anyway, uh, I didn't. There's a whole lot of stuff that I didn't include in the video, otherwise this would go on for hours. Um, if you get a chance to get near Flat Rock, North Carolina, uh, stop in, check it out. The, uh, the tour cost me uh, $3 with my senior discount, normally it's 5 So, well worth it. And uh, I'm going to get on the road, find a place for the night, and see where the road leads me. See you later, YouTube.